Hello again everyone, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at permissions on our Linux file system, specifically how to use the chmod command to change permissions. I'll give you a quick overview of what the permission bits actually mean, and then I'll give you some examples of how to change the permissions. So, let's go ahead and dive right in. Here on my web server, I have two files that I'm going to use as example files for the chmod command. And these are the files right here, just a few scripts. I have an Ansible bootstrap script, and I also have a backup script written in Python. Now the contents of these particular files don't really matter. What we're going to do is just use these as example files for the changing of permissions. But on the screen right now, we can't even see the permissions. So what I'm going to do instead is add a few options to the ls command. And I added dash lha. The dash l option is going to give us a long listing, which will enable us to actually view the permissions. H is human readable. It makes file sizes easier to understand. And A is for all or all files, which will show us hidden files as well. So as you can see, there's quite a few more files here than you originally saw in the output of the ls command without the extra options. We have hidden files here, and we know they're hidden because any file that begins with a period is a hidden file. It's not normally shown unless you add the A option. Now, this is the first actual file right here. And the name is wrapped to the next line, but it's actually only one line. We're going to ignore the dot and the two dots right here. The single dot just represents the current directory, and the two dots right here represents the previous directory. So what that means is that this Ansible bootstrap script is the first actual file inside this directory. Now here's the permission string. We're going to ignore the dot at the end. That may or may not be visible on your end depending on the distribution that you decided to go along with when you created your Linode instance. But this part right here, what these characters represent is the same regardless of the distribution that you decided to go with. So what I'm going to do right now is just quickly break this down so you can understand what a permission string consists of. This first character right here, which could be a dash, it might even be a D like you see right here. Regardless of what the first character happens to be, that first character in and of itself is the first section of the permission string. And again, it's just one character. The second section consists of the next three characters. The third section, also consists of three characters, and the fourth section consists of three characters as well. So the first section, which again is just a single character, that tells us what kind of file it actually is. The hyphen, like you see here, simply means that this object is a file. A D is short for directory. I often use directory and folder interchangeably, and I'm sure I'm going to do the same thing in this video out of habit. But what the D represents is that this is a directory. There's a few other possibilities for the first character that I'm not going to go into in this video. The most important thing to know is the difference between a file and a folder or directory. And now we know. A D stands for directory, and a hyphen represents a file. As a quick aside, you will also notice that the color of the files here are actually different. So we have blue, we have white, we have green. And traditionally, green means executable. White, well, that's just a standard permission for that particular item. And blue is the standard color for a directory. Depending on your distribution and the configuration of your shell, you might not even see any colors at all. And you can't always rely on that just to know what exactly you're looking at. I just wanted you to know what the colors traditionally mean. Even though you can't rely on that 100% of the time, it is something that you'll see at least every now and then. But let's start back at the beginning and understand what exactly the RWX means in the permission string. First of all, R is short for read. W is short for write. X is short for execute. And what those characters stand for is the same regardless of the section of the string that it appears in. So this means read, this means read, and also this means read. The difference is that this second section of the permission string, that corresponds to the user that owns that particular file. In this particular section of the permission string, that corresponds to the group that owns the file. 
So what that means is that the user that owns this file or folder, whatever it happens to be, has these three bits set for that case. The group has r hyphen x, and the last group right here, that is basically world or other, essentially everyone who's not the user or the group. Right here, we can see that root owns this file. That's the user that owns the file. So root owns this file right here, ansible bootstrap.sh. The root group is the group that has ownership over that particular file. And again, this last section right here corresponds to other or world. It has two different names. So you will see other people refer to this as other or world. So let's look at a few examples of how we can actually change the permissions of any of the objects that we have the ability or permission to change the permissions on. So I'm going to simplify the ls command down to dash l, and I'm going to grep for bootstrap. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want that particular file to be the only one that shows up. That just keeps the output a little bit simpler. Now, as we can see, the user has access to read, write, and execute. Group has access to read, does not have access to w. So what that means is that a bit can either be set or perhaps it's not set. You can't have an r in this field. This field is actually reserved for w. So for example, read, write, execute, it can't be execute, write, read. The bits are set in this order and this order only. If a bit is not set, it's changed to a hyphen. So what we can actually figure out from that is that the group that owns this particular file does not have access to write the file. But anyway, let's go ahead and change the permissions and see some examples of the chmod command and how we can actually modify those permissions. So we execute chmod, and there's several different ways that we can actually modify the permissions of an object. So for example, we could type g for group plus w for write, which is basically saying that we want to get the group section of the permission string, and we want to add the w bit, which would have been right here if it was set, but it's not set. So what this should do is add the w bit right here, and then we need to type the name of the file that we want to modify the permissions on, which is the bootstrap script. And of course, you have to have permission to basically change that particular object. If you do not own that file or have permissions already, then you will not be able to make changes. I'm logged in as root right now, and we can see that from this section of the prompt. And root owns that file, so that's why I'm able to do that. If I recall the command that I used earlier to actually look at the permission string for that file, we can immediately see the difference. The W is there. It wasn't there before. We can also do the reverse. We can change the plus sign to a minus sign. And as you can see, the permissions return to what they were before. The W bit is no longer set. Another thing that you can do is you can actually copy the permissions from one section to another. So again, I'll change the group section of the string, but I'm going to set it equal to the user section of that string. And as you can see, it essentially did exactly the same thing because user had these bits set right here, and I copied that over to group. That's yet another way that you can modify the permissions with the chmod command. And you can also combine, well, pretty much everything you know already. For example, chmod, you could type g minus w to take the w bit away. So I'm going to press enter on that. And let's take a look at what that last command actually did. I could have actually executed three different chmod commands for the results that you see right here. But instead of doing that, I actually chained three different operations with one instance of chmod. So at the beginning here, I decided to take write access away from the group. And then I took the execute bit away from the user. And finally, I took away both rx because I used minus. I took that away from other. And right here, we have the resulting string. We have read and write for the user, 
read for the group, as well as execute for the group, and I took away both R and X for other, so other has, well, nothing. Now, another thing that you can do is actually use numerical representation to change the permissions of an object, and this is my preferred way to do this. So what I'm going to do is type out a command, and then I'm going to explain to you what it's actually doing. So here I have chmod yet again. And instead of the earlier method, I am actually giving it a value of 644. Well, actually, it's not 644. It's just 644. These are three separate numbers. They're chained together, but they're just three different numbers. Now, in order to understand this, we're going to have to understand what the numerical value of each of the bits actually is. So I'm going to execute it. I'll recall the ls-l command. We can see the resulting permissions right here. But how did we arrive at this permission string from a value of 644? So the first thing to know is that each of these particular bits have a particular value assigned to them. R for read has a value of 4. W for write, that has a value of 2. X for execute, that has a value of only 1. Now, when we executed this command right here, the first digit applies to this section for user. The second digit, that applies to the group. And the last digit applies to other. So to arrive at 6, the first digit right here, I basically just added those two values together. Again, 4 for read and 2 for write. 4 plus 2 equals 6. If I was to make that a 7 instead, meaning I also added this right here, what that would do is also give it the execute bit as well. The 4 is only this, and this 4 is also only this. That's all there is to it. You simply memorize the three values that you see right here, and however you add those up for each of the three sections, again, user, group, and other, that gives you the resulting permission string. Now the last thing that I want to go over in this video is how the individual permissions pertain to files versus folders. So here again, we have the contents of Root's home directory. We also see the hidden files now that we didn't see before. And again, right here, we have a directory, and the rest of these are all files. So when it comes to files, it's pretty straightforward as far as what R, W, and X represent. Since we have a file right here, let's go over that. So read means that I can actually read the contents of that file. I can see what's inside that file. I could take a look at it. And in this case, if the user has access to W, that means they can change the file, they can write to the file. And X means execute. Again, if it's a program, they're able to run that program. If it's a script, they can run that script. And the same thing applies to group and other as well. In this case, members of that group are able to read that file. They are not able to write to the file though, but they can execute it, and the same for other. Now the reason why we're discussing this pertaining to files versus folders is because the actual meaning of these individual items changes depending on when you are referring to a file or a folder. So we could use this folder right here as an example. We know that it's a folder or directory because we have D right here. Now again, R stands for read. And what this means when it pertains to a folder or directory is that we can see what's inside that folder or directory. So I can use the ls command to see what's inside it. If I didn't have this bit set, I would not be able to see what's inside that directory. W means that I can actually change the contents of that directory. I could add another file to that directory. And X, of course, as you know, stands for execute. But this isn't a script. This is a folder. What does execute mean when it comes to a folder? What that means is that with X set, I can CD into that directory. That's how you can actually go inside the directory and make it your current working directory. If X is not set, you would actually get permission denied when you go to change into that directory. 
But anyway, I think that's enough for today's video. Those are the basics of the chmod command. You now know how to change the permissions on files and directories. And you now have a basic understanding if you didn't already. And you also should now have an understanding of what each individual permission bit represents. So there you go. I hope you found this video useful. And you should now know the basics of the chmod command. If you did find this video useful, be sure to share it with all of your friends and colleagues and click the like button if you like this video to let YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. Thanks for watching.